Man, you come straight out of a con. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. You already know what this show is about. We just talking about all kind of entertainment, nerd, movie, comic book shit, and we just don't hold back. That's why I got three of the rawest motherfuckers I know who are knowledgeable in the comic book, the movie entertainment realm, who also, too, don't hold shit back, don't care about popular opinions, anything. And that's why I love having them on this show. Of course, we got Young Deuce from the Geek Set Podcast. We got CT in the building. Of course, we got Dion Lack here as well. And we are jumping into the meat and potatoes of this. You see the shirt? Hey. The Batman. See the background. <laughs> you see the background. His is way better than just the shirt. Everybody dressed in black for this. You should call this podcast Black Laxatives. Why? Because we don't hold back shit. Let's go. <laughs> that just need to be a whole segment. That just need to be a whole segment. Just a straight. That's the one minute hot take on whatever topic. Right there. <laughs> But uh, before we do get started, anybody that is watching this, if you have not seen The Batman with Robert Pattinson and, of course, Zoe Kravitz, you need to stop watching this because we even talk about this shit all the way. We give it a full breakdown and we are not give, we giving away everything. So this is going to come out around the time like, hey, you have had enough time to see this. You've had enough time to watch it, had enough time to go check it out. It's time to talk about it. So, fellas, are y'all ready? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's di- let, let's let's dive into this, fellas. All right, we break. First, this has already been a week that people have had to be able to have seen it by the time of us recording this. Two, I loved the movie. I'm preface it by saying I loved the movie for what it was. Like in this universe, I loved it. Would I like to see it transition to other? No, for this world, it made sense. Yes. Did you for did you were you on board when they announced the casting? Because for me, I was not. No, because it was like I wasn't on board because one, everybody's like, yo, Ben Affleck is the best Batman. And it's like I can't give him that because he's never had a solo film. Right. So hey. when they announced uh, Robert Pattinson, I was like, come on. First, I'm tired of seeing Batman be rebooted. Two, I'm very annoyed that uh, Ben Affleck didn't get his fair shake because Live by Night bombed and Warner Brothers was like, uh, 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 you can't uh, direct a Batman movie anymore because the movie you just directed bombed. And right. it's like, fam, how many other movies did he have that went over 100 million or just successful in general? You're going to take this away. And Robert Pattinson, because it was between him and the guy who plays Beast on uh, the X-Men movies to yeah. play Batman. Uh, Nicholas, and, uh, what's his face? Nicholas Holt. Yeah. So. It was like, I was like, come on, bro. And, but we did get a good, a great cat woman out of this okay. and a great penguin because none of us thought. I did not know two, that was Colin Farrell. That's I did not know. Really? Man. Yeah. And, and steal I, the credits. I can see it right here. Like, I see it in the eyes. Like, that's why I like saw they got it. from Spin City. That's yeah, what I was <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if, the, if they didn't highlight how much, like, how unrecognizable he was with like the um the makeup and everything yeah. because similar to how you approach movie ct how you don't watch trailer i only watched the first one mm. and then after that i don't watch anymore mm-hmm. so at the time i was like dang i was like who's that I, I didn't i didn't realize that was colin farrell until the article started coming out like he's unrecognizable but i said what like i did not know that was bro but yeah with robert patterson i i'm i'm just here I, just like most men, I got dragged and I've seen all the Twilight movies. And so I held that. That that was that was my that was my introduction to Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. That's what kind of like what I held him to. And like I saw all the other stuff that he did, but I was just like, you know, thinking about Bruce, thinking about Batman. I said, he doesn't give it to me. I, was like, I don't I, I, I can't see it at all. And so when they announced the casting, I was completely off until that first trailer. And that first trailer, I said. All right, I think I'm gonna give this give this a a, a, a fair shot. Mm. I was gonna see it regardless because I mean, as much as I love DC and Batman, I it was no, I was definitely still going to see it. But I was on the fence. I was way off the fence before. Then when mm. they gave me the trailer, I said, "All right, I'm I'm gonna give it a fair shot." Here's yeah. my he, take. Here's, here's yeah. my take. I I've I've I think he was a good young Batman. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he was a bad Bruce Wayne. Horrible Bruce Wayne. Oh, horrible Bruce Wayne. Um, yeah. um, but we've never seen a teenage Bruce Wayne. We've always seen mm-hmm. him as an adult. So we don't know how, uh, how attached he was to his father, his money. Like if he was like how he got inspired. We don't know if, if, this, if this Bruce Wayne met uh, Raj Agul. Did the whole knew, knew the whole fighting and the the ninja? How did he learn how to fight? We don't know that that aspect of like. Well, he said uh, Alfred tra- Alfred trained him. Uh, Alfred he did. Trained. He had, he had did mention that he said I taught you how to fight and everything like that in one of the parts when I went and saw it the second time. So Alfred is the one that actually trained him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he didn't know there was a bomb in the package. Okay, he he couldn't sense that. He could. He couldn't get his- <laughs> we go. We go. We go. Get to that. We gonna get to that. We gonna get to that. And this but, and this was year two, right? This was year, 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 year two. Yeah. 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 But for but me, yeah. for the movie, I, I I did like it as a uh, Chinatown seven sort of mystery movie versus mm-hmm. watching it as a superhero movie. The slow pacing was was great for a a thriller, uh, a mystery movie. Um, but a, attaching action superhero movie should not be with this movie. So when you yeah. take mm-hmm. the lens off of superhero, it, you start you start to appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I felt the same way. Um, like, like, uh, just even trace back to like Colin Farrell's uh thing. So everybody felt the same exact way. Like, even people on set didn't know that was him. Like, the guy that played uh Falcone <laughs> didn't know it until the <laughs> premiere. Even the makeup artist didn't know. Yeah, no, <laughs> he was like, "Yo, I did not know that was like." He mentioned in the interview, like he did not know that was Colin Farrell until like the red carpet premiere, and they told mm-hmm. him it's like, "Yeah, he was playing Penguin." And so it's just like, look yo. at the call sheet. The fuck? That's what I was just like. Yo, it's like, yo, like, how, how did this <laughs> work? Accidentally to... say, hey, yo, Colin, come here. Yeah, yeah they went to like, what, like, how much of a method actor was he doing in this? I'm like, um, and then as far as like Robert Passett goes, like, me, I'm always a, you know, go against the grain, march, beat of the old drum. So I was one of the only people who thought Heath Ledger. Was gonna be a dope Joker when they first announced. They was like, "Nah, fuck mm. that dude from Brokeback Mountain." I was like, "Watch, he gonna kill that shit." <laughs> I forgot mm. to do that. Right? See, but that was what <laughs> everybody kept resulting to. But the same thing now with like Robert Pattinson and Twilight. Now, when I heard it announced, I had already seen him in something outside of Twilight. I can't I always forget the name, but it's the one he did with William Defoe that's in black and white. And I was yeah. like, "Yo, this dude can really act." I was like, mm. "Okay." And then so when I heard he was like Batman, I was like. I don't like, I don't like, and the first thing I thought about was, I don't like your chin. Your chin not going to represent Batman well. You know, yeah, it, ain't, it don't look right. But then, too, I started hearing different things. Like, I saw the first glimpse when it was doing, like, the red, uh, when it was in all red, and it was showing the suit. Mm-hmm. And I was looking, I was like, okay, which Batman is this? And then I found out it was year two Batman, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, this now starts to make a little more sense why he got cast. And for me, I... Don't think he was in any way the best Bruce Wayne, but I think like how Dion said and how you said CT, he was a great Bruce Wayne for this story. For this, yeah. Like, yeah, like I, I, I love to see like the whole, the daddy issues, the mm-hmm. I'm still not over it. It was kind of cringy of like, you're not my father. It's like, yo, how old are you? But then I think, then you start thinking about, well, wait, how old are you though? Mm-hmm. And how long ago was this? Especially when you see him like glimpse at like that child at the beginning of the stuff. It's like mm-hmm. how ta- like how much does this still affect you? And we also can see that okay, you haven't donned the Bruce Wayne mask as we know right. like in the Batman story. So yeah. I, I like I like that and I like the setting and stuff like that. But like going back to the other characters though, so how did y'all feel about Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman? <clears throat> Best Catwoman we've had since Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, absolutely. And I'm talking about, I loved Anne Hathaway coming out of her shell as an actress playing Mm -hmm. Catwoman because we had Mm -hmm. never gotten a chance to see her be like confident and sexy outside of Devil Wears Prada. And that was that. She was not Catwoman. I didn't, Mm -hmm. huh? (laughs) She's adorable. She's not sexy. She was sexy in that movie. Sexual. Maybe. (laughs) Anne Hathaway, listen, if you see Anne Hathaway's Princess Diaries and then you see her in uh, the Dark Knight Rises, you're like, oh, this is sexy. I'm not talking about Catwoman sexy. I'm talking about just yeah. sexy. Right. Now, yeah. when or we her. talk about Catwomen, I hated her mask in that movie, but when we get to Zoe, Zoe, I felt like Michelle Pfeiffer came through her performance and was like, yo, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You keep doing your thing, bitch. Like that's what it felt like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my yeah, Eartha yeah. Kit, you like I, I like Eartha Kit better. Come on, brother. I'm 35. Anyway, when you, I say when you look yeah, at don't that, do that. When you I ain't talking at, about an 87 <laughs> my dad. I ain't talking about that one. I'm talking about <laughs> I didn't watch Adam Wait, West's bad baby. Which which one, which one, which is sexier? Mark is or Catwoman? Which one, which one you saying is sexier? <laughs> Looking at the Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz embodied that shit. You got to remember, she's also year one, year two Catwoman. That's the thing that saved this entire movie was knowing and remembering it's year two. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that's what I that's what I I love about this Catwoman is when you look at it, like I said, she had the balance between, you know, like being fierce, but also being sexy. And she was just learning. The, the art of seduction, like how she can get what she wants and using that. And we got to see that in this movie. We got to see her figure out how to utilize that, figure out the right and the wrong. You know, she already was working in the underbelly of Gotham. She was mm-hmm. already there. But like, you know, even with her relationship with Bruce and just and, and it, I, I just felt like it was a really good balance of the, like when you think about Catwoman, you think about this, 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 this sexy individual who also like it's you know still a villain but also not necessarily a villain because she's really out for herself mm. and so it's like you know it's like you have you got to have that balance and i felt that like zoe definitely did that in this like she gave us that balance and like you said with the perspective of knowing that this is year two knowing that this is not Catwoman, who's been doing this for years and everything is still cat this is year two like that helped it with that as well because you got that more grounded uh of the character. Well, listen to this real quick. If we if we could compare, and I'm not comparing a Marvel movie to a DC movie ever, I'm saying if we can compare storyline times for how Spider-Man, Tom Holland Spider-Man was from um homecoming to no way home for what this Batman will be, I feel like we won't get the Batman that we deserve until movie four. To where like he's fully you know, Batman, he's a great Bruce Wayne, and he's got the season. I think that'll yeah. be like the fourth movie, because that's another reason they went young. They want him to be around forever. Hopefully they were yeah. smart enough to sign him to a yeah. six-movie contract instead of just three. Damn yeah. That, uh, ben Affleck had a long-ass contract, but people didn't support the film, so they had, they keep rebooting themselves, man. <laughs> no, that was not that was not the truth. Ben Affleck didn't get the look, didn't get the uh the full-on movie because his Live by Night movie bombed. That's how they do it, Warner Brothers. If your project over here, you like, hey, we love you because you just came off of a hot movie. And they're like, hey, do this other one. They're like, all right, bet. And then when you do that other movie, if it doesn't do well, they relate that to the one that you have standing with them. It's no different than when Snyder um, had delivered Batman versus Superman and it didn't do what they thought that it was going to do. So they were like, uh, we got to find a way to get this dude out. So when Justice yeah. League was already about to release they had already made their decision that oh great he's had this tragedy let's get him out of here yeah and that was that was wild release. do that you think wild. this movie is is going to be a standalone like the joker or is it going to try to tie in no he already said he already said he got a second one coming um, and, 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 and he didn't want already, to tie it in yep and they had and they announced the series already so, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and that's where i'm excited about it because i feel like i always said i was like Though it's always DC versus Marvel, DC should not follow Marvel's blueprint. No. DC should come up with their own blueprint. And the fact that they're doing a movie that's going straight into a series that's going, then they're going to give us a second movie, that's completely different. The one thing that I do applaud them for doing, which I said Marvel did flawlessly, um, and I think that is a good a good basis is that, like we said, we talked about Marvel launching with Iron Man when we had our our last conversation as how Iron Man was not the biggest character, but he was known enough that, and it started off that whole universe. With Riddler being the first villain in this, in in this, and, you know, Glyphs of Penguin, like we know Batman's role gallery front and back. He he has the most famous role gallery in all the comics. Mm -hmm. And to start with the Riddler, and then build upon that. I think that that's, all, like I said, to me, that that gives you that anticipation, like, oh, shit, I can't wait till Joker finally pops up. Oh, man, I can't wait till we see this. Like, you, you can't see, you, you can't wait to see the big name character. So I think that 
with them starting off with Riddler, him being known enough, but not, you know, the, the main big villain of Batman, I think that that's what, how you launch off a whole world, a whole universe, because it's mm. like you can get to that. I, I disagree with one part, if I may. Yeah. I'm sorry. The only part I want to disagree with is that DC is doing something different than Marvel with the movie and then the series because they're doing the exact same thing as Disney Marvel because that's what Marvel's doing. Like they'll yeah. drop the movie, they'll drop this TV show, and they need you to watch the TV show because this <laughs> character might not be popular enough <laughs> to carry a movie, but we need to get this information out. So by the time you see the movie, everything ties but in. That's what sense. Marvel's that's what Marvel's doing now. I think I guess I'm saying that's that's the start. Like DC uh -huh. starting that way. Versus how Marvel started. That's what I meant by that. Oh, like, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's exactly but, what Marvel's doing now. Yeah, yeah. But, but I like, I like, I think too though. It actually like with this movie, it kind of flipped that with the big names. Now too, like another thing they are kind of doing with Marvel is you want to see the ones we haven't seen now. So it's right. like yo, even the way you reimagined Riddler, it's like yo, I never imagined Riddler creepy. And stuff. So it's like, yo, right. to see this guy and to see what he's done, and, the, and, and you know, we go, we gonna get to a part that I know Dion couldn't stand, especially when it gets to the end. But it's <laughs> like to see that reimagining. Like now, I want to see like, what are you gonna do with Clayface? Like, Ooh. what happens when Black Mask is here? It's like yeah, you right. now, and especially like the way they made, because for me. It wasn't Batman that I was uh, more focused on. It was the fact of like, yo, this is the first time I've seen Gotham come to life on the silver, on the big screen. This is the first time I'm just like, yo, this looks like Gotham. Christopher Nolan did a great job of putting our realism together, but this yeah. one is like, yo, I this is Gotham. So this you know what, this was a heist for the Riddler, and yeah, he won. Was, yeah, <laughs> you know what's a, funny about what Thanos, said, pretty much. What you say about Gotham? Up until this point, I praised Tim Burton's Gotham High. Because I said, even though it was campy and comical, I said, that Gotham felt dangerous versus mm -hmm. Nolan's Gotham. Nolan's Gotham looked like a regular city that just mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. everyday other crime. But I was like, that Gotham, Burton's Gotham felt like real crazy. So when I saw this one, I said, whoa, this blew Burton's Gotham yeah. out of the water. I was uh, like, yeah. always you don't I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't say blow it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say no, blow it out the water. No, no, because there, there, there's, there's, there's a magic to Tim yes. Burton's Gotham oh, yeah. that yeah. you I can't that take guy. away. Yeah, like that. The tones, everything. But this Gotham, this Gotham, I think was able to combine Nolan's and Burton's together. That's the thing. So look. So Will, to your point, looking at uh, Nolan's Gotham and looking at um, Matt Reeves's Gotham. Nolan's Gotham was extremely real for 2007. I mean, mm -hmm. 2000, what was it? 2005? 2006 is what that first yeah, one came out, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, look at that one. And you're like, all right, this is good. But that Gotham felt very white collar crime. Like mm -hmm. if you weren't involved in um, high stakes money, you would be safe in Gotham. Which you is can the see that on CNN in right now. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what it felt like. Whereas this Gotham, they showed immediately like, hey, yo. Even if you working as a taxi driver, you can yeah. get it. Tim I Burton's did not feel Gotham. safe. Yeah. I didn't feel safe, bro. I felt like every right. cop was dirty. It was exactly what it is Gotham. Yeah. And, and Tim Burton's Gotham, it felt that same vibe, but 80s. It's like yeah. everybody can get it because he dealt off with the um the homeless hobos in the very beginning yeah. of the movie in the first Batman to show you how low the crime was. Yeah. They robbing people in alleys. So um, Tim Burton was the greatest Batman for that time period. And Nolan's was for his. And I think this Matt Reeves joint was a great depiction on realism, uh, even in this comic book. Absolutely. You guys know the Riddler was based off of the uh, Zodiac Killer. Really? He was, in, yeah, I, I looked at the picture. I'm just looking up for it now. But it was based off of that um, and, how, and how they see the glasses and stuff. And when you take off the glasses, he has that like the little white face right there. Yeah. Don't look at that guy, but this one here. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So they definitely base it off of that. Um, and 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 what I found out is, uh, did you guys figure out who the the guy at the end was? No. That's Two Face. Uh, no. They they they're going in the direction of. I thought they confirmed making, it, making him to a Joker. Yeah. And it's, it's played the by the from the actor played, from Eternals. Yeah, it's played by um, what's his name? Um. The guy with the mental problems from Barry uh, Keoghan. Yeah, 
powers. I'm sorry. Yeah. Barry Keoghan. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's too and, early for Joker, bro. Yeah. That's what I said, too. It's like, why? Why? There's like, so you, many There's so many Batman villains that you could go to before you even touch on, the Joker. You bro, I, I, still, bro I, I, I still say Clayface. Like, I even, I even thought Clayface of a dope really for Clayface. Good. Like, if he just had, like, a disease that basically, like, allows him Woo! to stretch his shit. Yeah. And then I he like start that. and he start just warping, and that's what he does to warp his stuff. But I then like too, that. what happens is like we say he's at he forgets what he looks like because mm-hmm. he's done it so much, and then that starts to drive him crazy that he can't put his face back together. I like so, that. so that leads him to start doing shit. I, was, I like I, the story. Go ahead, Deuces. I was just gonna say in regards to just like just villains that I would like to see. I was thinking Zaz because I was thinking in this world and mm-hmm. how crazy it is to have somebody like Zaz pop up would be also would be dope as you know what i'm saying as somebody you know as an unlikely character to see yeah. you know in a movie Clayface is fire. I think the story that I loved uh, origin wise of Clayface the best was when there was a um, and i know you saw this will the animated series the new one not the not Ken, Te- Kevin Conroy's joint but the next one the Romano joint yeah. where Clayface was a police detective first and he was a yeah. police detective and he ended up falling into this yeah. like you know, the chemical joint, but I also love the always other. Fall the vet. <laughs> yeah, they always follow the vet. I love the first version of the animated series where Clayface was the character that um he had, like you said, Will, a disease and he needed this uh this cream that this company made. Yeah. And the cream made it worse and he kept getting addicted to the cream and became this like monster villain because it seemed grounded enough to where all the chemicals in Gotham, that could be real. That could be it. Yeah. 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 What about you, Dion? Uh, they they're they're uh Matt Reeves agreed to do a Mr. Freeze sequel. Um what, what a Mr. Freeze sequel? Sequel. I mean not a sequel, but he's gonna be the next villain. The main villain he said, here. Uh he has said we 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 threw around the idea of hmm. having a guy who was really good with ice or who knew how to control water to fix the problem from the first movie. And then obviously he doesn't get paid. Like some throwing a some throwing around oh, something like that. Oh, so that, 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 so that, that was, kind of on board yeah. now. <laughs> that would have, yeah, that actually be dope too because with the rock, like with Pinion getting his own series and that rise, that could also set the tone to change right. Gotham's like grimy right. tone to like that now cold. Uh, yeah. cool with ice everywhere because you know, like when you think of the iceberg lounge, you remember like it being very iceberg blue. lounge. Yeah. yeah, so it's like seeing that and having to go back there to talk the hero to them. Turned villain, he realized he's not getting paid. Like he spoke, like I saved this community, I saved Gotham. You know, we were going under underground or something like that. Mm-hmm. Send this to the group, Dion, because I did not see that. Me either. Or know I, about it. The old, the old, the only, the only. I said thing, saying, nigga. I didn't say show. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that the only thing that I'm. With, with that, that I would, I would hope, I would just with that storyline that I would hope they just try to bring in is that how they're going to bring in uh, Nora, because that's a that's a huge part of his motivation. Mm-hmm. This, this, this could actually be the first time you actually see Nora alive, mm-hmm. so oh, it could be true. that, yeah. That and then also Barbie. too, we could see what happened because, like you said, like he said, if he's dealing with like the seawall and trying to put it together, and he may have came up with some stuff that actually is getting her sick. And then that's what caused her for that to happen. And then that's also, too, what starts to kind of drive him to do the stuff he's doing. I would love to see a true, like, okay, what I've loved about the last few uh, superhero films is that they, they've been really laser focused on the telling of how that villain isn't really a villain. Like, they've yeah. shown mm-hmm. their motivation and how they came about. And Freeze, Freeze is probably one of the greatest underutilized characters in Batman because we always see Nora after she's frozen. We always see Victor after he's already the super cold-hearted motherfucker. We might have seen a glimpse or two before he became Mr. Freeze, but I want to see him be Victor before Freeze even comes about and then that that breaking point. That's what I want to see. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because even in Gotham, they didn't didn't dive into Nora. Like in the show Gotham, I'm, no, I'm, they I'm didn't. Not, I don't think. No, one. they didn't. They didn't. No, no. There hasn't been one like like a few things we'll, like they can really clear up. We haven't seen that. Uh, what they they even did for Catwoman was like they we actually got to see Catwoman's like personality and depth. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like when Michelle Pfeiffer she had just became that, so we seeing her get used to it. Like yeah. you said, Anne Hathaway was already in it, but this one we got to see 
all the layers of Catwoman, the confidence, but also to the vulnerability of people she cares about, why she keeps the cats around. Like you really got to see who Selena Kyle is before she becomes uh, the full Catwoman. I bet that house stank. (laughs) Right? (laughs) All strays. I was like, ew. You you but, disregarding Holly Berry's uh, Catwoman where she showed that you know we disregard that bullshit. Like, How dare you? Listen, listen. <laughs> I don't. I don't knock Holly Berry being Catwoman. Whoever wrote that story though, yeah. sharpen some pencils and follow. That's Man. all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Holly Berry really. is sexy. Like she's the first incarnation of a Zoe, but. The material she had to work with. I don't, I've never blamed uh, Holly oh, Berry yeah, for Catwoman. Yeah. I've only blamed the people who were responsible in producing that budget. Yeah, she was her playing like playing basketball and doing the backflip and dunking. I was like, well, they they made her they made her like an <laughs> actual Catwoman. Remember they had her licking out of a mm-hmm. bowl and cleaning yeah. herself like her crazy. eyes changed and stuff like that. I was like, they it's like, it's like, it's it's like who, whoever wrote it didn't know nothing about the source material. No, no. <laughs> And then you would you given, remember. Go ahead, Will. And I was like, and you were given Halle Berry as your lead, and that's what you did. So it's, it's like coming off of a Grammy. I mean, Oscar. I mean, you got to remember this, man. And I had this conversation literally yesterday with uh, Shante Wayans. The movies from two thousand, no, from nineteen ninety nine until about two thousand and six, with special effects were trash there were a couple that came through you're like oh this is pretty good but there was a style of cgi and storytelling that and special effects in that time period that were still figuring it out right so because of their mistakes we were able to get the movies after 2006 and be like oh my god this is amazing but before then they were still in the infant stages and everything suffered Catwoman was a casualty yep that's I'm why gonna I this, I'm gonna say this, and y'all gonna hate me for this. This is why I think Star Wars is so successful because it was groundbreaking for me. I don't like the franchise at all, um, but I feel like at that time it was like, yo, mm-hmm. this, this, yo, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anything like this in the '70s. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, and I watch the story, and I'm like, this story is just not great. It it just feels yeah. Here we now are. you. I, now you didn't say some shit before, <laughs> <laughs> but I got I gotta say, Dion, go for it. We on the same side of this fence, same bro. Fucking side. I always I ask this. Always Star Wars fan okay, I will ask you this. Oh, what is Star like Wars about? What about no? What is Star Wars about? A Death Star, apparently. <laughs> Okay, none of no no Star Wars fan can ever simply tell me what Star Wars is about. I mean, it's I, I, this here. I treat Star Wars the way I treat uh, Apple. Like, like I uh, I I acknowledge their flaws, mm-hmm. but I still like the product. <laughs> like, okay, I, I acknowledge I acknowledge that like they literally told the same story three times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> three episodes. And, but I feel like now they're finally getting it. I feel like now yeah. with, the, with the shows, like Mandalorian, great. Yeah, Mandalorian, Boba Fett. Yeah, like they're, they're all of that's good. Uh, so I, I, I acknowledge that there are definitely some flaws, but I still love Star Wars. But I don't want to, I don't want to derail us. The only thing I had a problem with Dion is how you pronounce successful. Damn it, said, do I hate that's the only bad. <laughs> <laughs> all Star right, Wars. I never let it go. Success. I ain't never letting go. Success. <laughs> But Star Wars only deals with Death Stars. I'm like, bro, can we? And I watched one of the movies, and it was so easy for them to get to the boss villain. And I was like, if this is how easy it was, they should have went here <laughs> no, in the, the beginning plan, of the movie. But the plan, though, like, listen, we got a whole ship that can blow up a planet. Yeah. But I'm going to make a shaft that a laser can go through and blow the whole shit up. Yeah. And, they fixed and, it in wait, a wait, Rogue One, though. They fixed it, and then they created the, again. It's like every time they right. create a Death Star, it has a weak point. They're like, and I was like, at some point, cover up the weak yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who my <laughs> ass built this? Yeah, yeah. That's like, what you need to find out. That's funny. Yeah. The engineer was like, you think we should cover this up? Nah, let's, nah. let's just kind of leave Nobody's it. Nobody's ever going to get to it. We're going to blow up their whole <laughs> Right, world. right. Oh, you're right, you're right. The, the, the second engineer like, was like, gate around <laughs> it or a wall. No. The second engineer was like, hey, didn't, 
didn't that destroy us last time? Like, nah, nah. Well, yeah, yeah, but this, they, this, they, they wouldn't think to do it twice. <laughs> they wouldn't think to do it twice. There's no way. That There's no always, way. They always have the rumors this villain. Contained. It's like a Hydra, the way Star Wars is. It's like they get rid of the main villain, and apparently that main villain was a pawn. And they have eight more people to take that person's place. So you never have an opportunity to take off the head of the snake. And that's something that was very um, unfulfilling about watching Star Wars compared to Power Rangers for me, where, yo, you got Rita, you got Zed. Rita has a father that they never really dove into who was supposed to be an all-powerful dude. But we know who the people are instead of... um, and after they kill that villain, they get a new power. And apparently there's a new villain for that power. That's like, hey, hold on a second. Now, this is what I've been trying to get for centuries. And it's like, all right, bet. But Star Wars is like Grandmaster this and Supreme Leader that. And it's like, who the fuck is the leader? But so I was a new like, nigga in a black hood. It just it was, was a, a part the, of the, the plan. <laughs> like, who the fuck is this now? <laughs> but the funny show, they part they about Star Adam Wars. Driver's face way too fast. They did. It was like minute five. He was like, this is who I am. I was like, hey, cover <laughs> your face up. <laughs> like, who told you to not have a hood? The funniest <laughs> thing about Star Wars, too, is that it's like, fam, so there's like how many evil corporations are there in this universe? And, and why is everybody able to amass such a big army and go un, unchecked? Like every time a villain ends, the next villain seems to come immediately, immediately. with their massive army. Like, fam, wait, wait. So like, why didn't you help us with him? <laughs> like, yeah, where did you, you where did you create this? You're where starting you to agree this? with us now. Come on over to the side. Hey, come on over here. Come on over here. We got a lot. We got we gonna save that for another episode though, because this one is about the Batman. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I'm oh, no, 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 it's all good because y'all yeah, yeah. we we yes. Batman, we if we're Batman. talking about uh, also, also shout out an honorable mention to John Totoro. He doesn't get enough credit. Oh, he does not. Brother, he's been fired to me since Mr. Deeds. Like being able yes. to be so funny and yes. be such an amazing dramatic actor. Underestimate my sneakiness. The only, that was my favorite line. The <laughs> only bad thing that I have to say about his character is I wish he was yoked because Falcone was Falcon, supposed yeah. to be yoked. Yo, yeah. Oh, yoked, nigga. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, because I thought he was gonna be Maroni at first, because yeah. I was like Maroni ain't really all that big. I was like, right, he'd have been perfect, but that, but then it was like he was Falcon. I was like, okay, I get, uh, I hey. get where y'all going with it, okay, yeah. but also too, you know, Penguin ain't supposed to be as massive, you know, Penguin kind of right. was supposed to be a little stubby and stuff like that. But this is like we get this Penguin who looks like a real mobster. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? but like, you gotta remember, Will, and this is and this is another thing I love. I'm so glad you said that. This movie looks exactly like the Arkham series. So yeah. Colin Farrell's Penguin looks yes. exactly yes. like the video game Penguin. Yes. Um, yes. Everybody, even Alfred, like everybody mm-hmm. looks like how they did in the uh, video game series, including Batman's suit. Oh, yeah. Except Riddler. Riddler was the only one that they did. They went different with yeah. design-wise. Yeah. I hate that his jawline was up here. Like, why was this much this much of his mass open? Like, it's usually yeah, like- I, Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that shit just kept bothering me. Just, I was like, what? what? And then what is this? What is this? What is this guy? What's what's this dominatrix shit you got right here on the nose? That's year two, pal. You you know he gonna get multiple suits, so you you know Lucius is gonna cook up another suit for him. Lucius wasn't even prevalent. I know. Not yet. Face covered up. Oh yeah. Is it any Batman suit where his mouth is covered up? Yeah, Batman. Oh yeah. Yeah, Batman. No, no, that's another one too. I remember well, technically now too the uh the new Batman uh also the one that's the, the black Batman. He is is also covered now. Oh well, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. for, I'm talk- I'm sorry. I don't know why I was mentally only thinking of in the universe of just like young Bruce Wayne and old Bruce Wayne. You're absolutely right. But what is his name? Batwing has a fully closed mask because he's black yeah. and he's smart. And yeah, he wants to cover his whole face. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it'd be a nice little backstory if you see his face shot. Like I learned last time. <laughs> <laughs> but if we if, if we're going off the internet jokes, he has to show his white privilege, so he has to have that open. <laughs> Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Oh, that, oh, that, like, like I told Dion, that was the star of this movie. White privilege was definitely the star oh, yeah. of this movie. Oh, yeah. But like, but like, let's jump into it. So like this, like. Uh, so the premise of the story, man, we start off first with like the corruption of Gotham. We got the, we got the, uh, what was the mayor walking in this house and we got the Riddler just posted up like a fucking creep. Man, they, I love that. I love that they made the Riddler creepy because of that. 
because like every iteration of the of the Riddler, we got two iterations of the Riddler always. We got full on like like goofy, but still, you know, challenging the mind. And then we had just full on mind games, like the person who was just like, they're intellectual, um, but they still like, he still had like flair to him. You know, he was still the Joker with a little bit of flair. This one felt like, like they was like, all right, we making, we making, the, uh, we making Riddler jigsaw. Like that's how, like I got jigsaw five from him. Cause it was like all mind games, but like deadly ass mind games. And Batman yeah. and Gordon were not great detectives. Every single one of their clues were failures. <laughs> they was like, oh, the flying uh, uh, bat. No, no, the, flying the rat bat. Oh, oh, no, no. I mean the. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, like, oh, like, the L or La? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Did you, and you know, penguins got wings too. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. What? They failed everything. <laughs> I was like, okay, and so that so that would we do move on to that part. So like, of course, we get to the part you know, Riddler has done his deed and stuff like that, and we have Batman and them come in just like 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 they said, not really great detectives. And then also too, I never and in my life thought of Commissioner Gordon being black, but then when I saw Jeffrey Wright, I was like, I don't see if he was way, black. Man. That's it. it, that, it that, that's it, right? So. He don't have the title as commissioner, though. No, he was like, lieutenant yeah. at the time. Yeah, he yeah. was lieutenant uh, at the time, so he hasn't got commissioner yet. But you, the commissioner you definitely... was killed. Yeah. Was that him? Was that the guy that came in and was pissed off and stuff like that? Yeah. The, yeah. One that the one that was like, why do you have him here? Blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah. yeah. That, that was okay. So when you say that, I man, I completely agree. When I look at, um, that was the first time you ever saw Gordon really similar to the cartoons with Batman as far as like them mm -hmm. working together side by side because um what's the guy who was in a Christopher Nolan's joint? Um uh, uh, Oldman, Gary Oldman. Yeah Gary Oldman. his his uh Gordon was working with Batman but he was still in the dark. You know what I'm saying? And even Ben Affleck's uh JK Rowling, I mean JK Simmons was still you know in this like separate but this one was right in the mix with him. And then when you see him become uh, this detective, I'm like, all right, it's year two. They ain't solving shit for real yet. <laughs> this is year two for real. Yeah. Right. And he trusted Batman. He was like, let me tell you something. I'm about to lose my fucking job with you, man. Yeah. I'm going to give you this key, man. I'm just... <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, hey, just, yo, just like, like, like uh, we can hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, wait. So they heard, who do you think you are? I'm like, you said that in the same tone as you just said, you gotta get out of here. Yeah. Your tone did not change at all. I, I found it hilarious that it was like in, in black people fashion, we're gonna give you the, we're gonna give you the all right, man. Hey, listen, uh, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> like, like, he he ain't not detect like, what they doing. They had something in mind, they doing this. All of a sudden, said, what do you mean? <laughs> like, Dude, they, they planned that. <laughs> He said, man, you could have pulled back one of your punches. I did. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that was a punch, boy. Yeah, that was a crazy thing. He socked you out. Like, yeah. oh, my God. No. I was like, yo, Commissioner Gordon is tough. I was like, bro. A cop in their faces. And they was like, next scene, OK, he's good now. We, we, we. Right? Yeah. I'm going to meet you at the, I'm gonna meet you at the traffic light. But, but again, too, though. That it, you gotta, you gotta admit though, it really don't seem that surprising. That's how you see the GCPD. Mm. Like, first of all, <laughs> why are there always eight hundred cops around doing nothing? Nothing. <laughs> no other crimes. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. else. Follow Batman. Yeah, it was just like, yo, did you get into an interrogation room? Why are there three hundred and forty-seven of you in here? I want to take his mask off. Like, <laughs> why are y'all here? <laughs> Wait. Yo. When the when the black dude reached the church, I was like, man, what are you doing? Dog? You, like, you, you see, see him in your face. <laughs> what are you, you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Everybody had moved on. His back was turning. He was like, let's take that guy there. I was like, yeah, <laughs> and funny. that's what it was. It was big. Man, give me that shit. Give me that motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, I'll tell you something I didn't notice until I had a conversation <laughs> afterwards about it. This is going to blow y'all mind. So also, I love Matt Reeves for giving us backstory on Martha Wayne because yes. we've never yeah. had her. Right? Yes. So when he said the uh, the Waynes and the Arkhams Arkham. were yeah. the most popular uh, and wealthiest families in Gotham, I said, oh, shit, that's why he's the elite. I thought they were just talking about Thomas Wayne's money and his lineage. Yeah. But showing Martha, let me hit you with this twist. Martha Wayne, I mean, Martha was originally in Arkham, 
Arkham Asylum, Arkham Hospital, that means this nigga Bruce owns Arkham Asylum where he's sending all these criminals, which is double dipping as fuck. <laughs> That's wild. So who's right? the real villain here? Exactly. <laughs> How you throwing niggas in a hospital in a jail that you own? That's how you get it. I never knew that. But you know what, too, though? I'm glad that they put that out, but then that also gets us kind of too prepared. Um, and I think Matt Reeves may have given that away for Flashpoint. Because also in Flashpoint, uh, because because of Bruce dying in Flashpoint, uh, Bruce is actually killed. Martha loses her mind and becomes the Joker. Joker, okay, yeah. Oh, right, and right, so, right. but that now leads back though to her being an art, being an Arkham, and her having mental problems already. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yo, I I love seeing that they gave like how you said, CT, giving cracks and flaws within yeah. the Waynes and stuff like that. And then too, Matt Reeves is also hinted that he wants to now bring in the Court of Isles for mm-hmm. the next one. So it's just like, yo, who introduced them? Was it Martha's family that was in the Court of Isles? Mm. Was it Thomas Wayne? Or was Wayne even accepted into there? It's like, yo, there's now a whole bunch of layers they've added to that by giving us those cracks and flaws in the Thomas family. Here's the here's the funny thing. Learning, yes and, learning all of this information is mind-blowing because, like I said, I know so much about Batman. Did not know Martha was originally in Arkham and she had the mental problems from there. I knew the Flashpoint story of her being crazy, but I'm like, how does this, this doesn't make sense. But hearing you say that, Will, makes even more sense. But now, here's the caveat. <clears throat> Who the fuck is the second movie? Because Dion said Mr. Freeze, you said Court of Howls, Deuces is saying Joker. Oh, it's like, what the fuck is oh, part two? I got two you. Because uh, you know they got a Gordon movie spinoff. See, no, they just can't. Well, no, they just canceled that. Not movie, not movie. Um, a TV show. Well, no, they, they just canceled they just pulled it? that. They just pulled that. They're not gonna be doing that one. So, um, they what they pull? Well, they're supposedly tying it in with the Arkham series. So it's supposed to be three of them: Penguin, Arkham, and GCPD. But they are pulling the GCPD one and trying to combine it inside of Arkham. Yeah, I don't need a separate GCPD because I feel like that would be Gotham. Yeah, what was that say? Gotham match. was all of that. Um, yeah. And they all dirty. I don't want to see a whole bunch of fucking dirty cops and one clean cop. That's the- <laughs> right. It's just like, yo, that's not a long, that's like a, a good them. limited series. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was legit Gotham. Everybody yeah. was down there dirty. Like it was, it was, but you know, also learning that information about Martha, it also makes you question the Martha Wayne and- Why did you say that Martha- name? <laughs> Why did you say that name? <laughs> it makes you question, it makes you question their relationship in general. Like, did, did you guys really love each other or was this a power move? Was this, you know, be knowing how political everything is in Gotham is like, was this sanctioned and set up to gain that power uh, between two individuals? That's what you said, that deuce. That goes back to something I told y'all in our group. Oh, <laughs> that may be Alfred's kid, bro. Boy. Oh, boy. Them lonely <laughs> nights, Martha went to that next study. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hello, what Martha. Oh, I'm just saying, because you know when he kept saying, you're not my father, I'm Alfred. Alfred was going, look at that, like. <laughs> Alfred was like, hey, I mean, hey. That's a good They're like, mm, okay. They're like, why you got these cufflinks, huh, if you knew? That's a great <laughs> point. You knew. He gave them to me. I mean, she gave them to me. Well. <laughs> she, she, I mean, your father gave them to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. That's so oh, yeah. interesting. I think. Oh, yeah, the movie in total gave us a lot of information that was necessary. It showed him in different lights. Um, It's year two, so I stalled him out with a lot. But um, I did enjoy the fact that the city was already had a level of fear from seeing the bat signal compared to crime just being so rampant. But I would love to see a Mr. Freeze because of the water. Yeah, but I think uh, even to Dion's point, like how we, and how to your point as well, and, and Deuce, we saw so many characters be introduced to here. Can mm-hmm. it, it makes it even more like exciting to see like you adding several others. So I can see the freeze element. I can see the quarter aisles element being added to there. I can see now where we, we leave Penguin off at. Yeah. Where's Batman? And then too, if you wanted to maybe introduce another one, because what it looks like it's building to is kind of like, the Arkham video game. So mm-hmm. even I'm seeing like building the seawall, you might make that old Gotham and cut that and cut that shit off. And then Ooh. that becomes your new ghettos. Yeah. yeah. 
And so you might have that area. So I think too, it's just like your start. I think we're going to start seeing the expansion of Gotham because even too, as much as we saw the fear we had of it, we still didn't see a lot of Gotham. Yeah, we, we we didn't really get to see everything it could possibly be. We saw downtown. We saw the Iceberg Lounge. We saw a brief part of Wayne Tower, which we learned is not a part of downtown. Right. So there's so many other areas that we didn't get to see in this universe that Matt mm-hmm. Reeves created, which can give those mm-hmm. elements for a Mr. Freeze, for a quarter hours, and whoever else they want to throw into. Let me yeah. tell you how dope their marketing department is. You know that, that website at the end? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you go I'll to look it, it up. I looked it up. It's another like di- uh, deciphering thing. Yep. Um, and once you figure out all the letters, um, it you says answer a string of questions. Once you answer the questions, right, it reveals. Yeah. And then there's the video of of Bruce Wayne's father um, doing a little his little speech. And then it says "hush," which is obviously a uh, Riddler, word. right? Um, yeah. But it's like you know, you're a fraud. And then at the end, it says, you think I'm finished, but perhaps you don't know the full truth. Every ending is a new beginning. Something is coming. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I had to do a lot of deciphering to figure that out. But I was like, that's that, you don't have to give me some more of that. Like, you, well, like, this is yeah. when, when, that's why I was saying when you're talking about who he is. Um, and this is what I've gotten from the research of looking into it. They were saying that in the next movie, again, that's why I was like, trying to figure out where the next movie going to go. We will see Riddler reprise his role, but it's also going to be like there's going to be some sort of team up with the Joker. So it's not only going that that's what I heard at, you know from the reading of it. But again, like I said, I like the storyline of Mr. Freeze a little bit better. Um, but I also with the Batman, the whole movie, the one thing that I did love a lot was how the how other people took vengeance. Like, mm-hmm. the, like vengeance, like, you know, Batman, <laughs> he made that his thing, right? And he had in his interpretation of what vengeance was. So when the reveal happened and one of Riddler's goons said, I am vengeance, and he saw it, it was that, it was that, it was like, yo, you say a word like vengeance, everybody's going to have their own interpretation of what that actually means. So yeah. like where Batman is trying to <laughs> use fear and vengeance as justice, where these other people, they look at it justice, but they really want to, they want to wreak havoc. And I love how that was a theme throughout the movie. Like what yeah. is vengeance actually? And, uh, and so, like, they I don't call that. him Batman. They call him like once or twice. Yeah. He's like, you look like a bat, but they called him vengeance more. Yeah. yeah, and and I was like, let me look up what vengeance means. Do y'all know what the vengeance definition is? I know y'all what? know what probably but it's punishment inflicted or retribution exact for injury or wrong. Something like this nigga was like, I'm gonna find the, I'm gonna find all the people that's doing wrong and, and cause harm to you. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, no, if you go back to when they switched it to the '80s, like that's what we saw with this this Batman. It was like, yo, like how how uh, CT mentioned when you saw that bat signal. It's supposed to strike fear into you. Like yeah. you look at this dark spot and you like, nah, I'm out, bro. I'm out because like, yo, you if you get caught by the bat, you going home with a broken limb on somewhere. Mm-hmm. But y'all and remember so- the y'all remember the animated series? He used to always say, "I am vengeance. I am the Dark Knight. I am the Batman." So if if the first one is vengeance. Mm-hmm. Hopefully the second one could be, I don't know, I'm trying to make it into a poet. Poetry. Yeah. I, yeah, I am the knight. But then too, like you say, break down the knight in so many different ways. Now you can start to also get, is he going to be the dark knight? But is he also going to be Gotham's white and shining knight and start mm-hmm. going into the Bruce Wayne element of putting his money back into the city? There's so many ways of going there. And just like how you said in this, in the third film, that's when it at the end becomes, I am Batman. And right. then as CT said in the fourth film, that's when we get the Batman we know. So because you may have you a point at, on how that. You look at Tom Holland and he was great. You know, all three, well, the first two movies were really, you know, they were cool. It was like, oh, this is great. But he was coddled. He's the most coddled Spider-Man we had ever had. And then in part three, when he truly suffered loss and yeah. dealt with the shit that Spider-Man deals with and making the big bad decisions. And now he had no more help outside of these other two Spider-Man who had also done what he had done, it was like, all right, now I'm finally Spider-Man. Yeah. Now my journey really begins with this fourth movie. So with this Batman joint, it's like, I don't want to see a Robin in this world either, to be honest with you. He's way too young to adopt a Robin. 
<laughs> hey, technically, though, you kind of saw him. Uh, yeah, you, think you, you think that was him? I, the whole movie, I was thinking it was It's him. the same character. It's the same actor. So, oh, 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 that little from, boy. Yeah, from the train yeah. station. For those that don't know, if you've seen the scene where he's in the train station, and it's the guy with the half painted mask. He's yeah. actually uh, Tim Drake's Robin Tim Drake. in Titans, and but he's he didn't too beat, old. And he didn't beat him up, so I was kind of like, "That's kind of cool that it was like, you know, I know that's not what I know that's most likely so not I it." But I wasn't talking about him. I was actually talking about the little boy that Dion, was the mayor's son. Yeah. Oh, the mayor's son. The whole movie, I was like, "Are they trying? Are they trying to position him, no. Robin?" And then I said, I, "I didn't want that either." Um. And that's what I'm, that's, again, that's what I was trying to wonder, because I'm like, yo, all right, like, in this world, how does Robin fit? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. see a circus coming to Gotham, bro. It's it's covered in water. Like, I don't see how they're going to do it. Like, unless... I mean, but again, too, we have, again, there's still a whole bunch of other parts of Gotham we where haven't seen, because you can think about, too, from that standpoint, Poison Ivy's part. Like, where is there a botanical garden at in this buttfuck of a city? And, and Selena left that's for Bloodhaven. Yeah, you know, you know what bothers me about I and I know I'm, I'm gonna say this, I know it needs to happen, but what bothers me when it's chaos happening, people are dying, water is coming in, people get electrocuted, things are falling down. You get the moments of like, thank you. I was like, no, we're, we're still in chaos. Yeah. I don't need to see a kiss right now. Say that's, that. That's that's movies in general. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it shit can be happening, and it, 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 it'll, it'll be me in the movie like CT. I gotta tell you how much you mean to me, brother. Like my whole life, I ain't had somebody believe in me like how you believe in me. And, yeah. and, and it's like this. The, the world's about to destroy you. Can the we world. wait until we survive, dog? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the nigga's hand off. Are you talking about this right now? Can you two get back into this fucking fight? <laughs> like, what? That was he just shot a... me in my arm. Like, yo, what are you doing right now? I heard y'all mention y'all seen it more than once. I definitely can't watch it again. It was very, it was also a very long movie, but yeah. I enjoyed it. I but enjoyed I like, but it, but ta- it, it was taxing on the body. Like, that's how I started <laughs> getting to it. was taxing on the body, man. Like, you know, you start getting them squeamish just when you, oof. Yeah, yeah. And you got to be like this. And then you start, like, you hitting three hours and you start getting to the point of, like, I like the movie, but are we getting to the end? Because I yeah. don't want to get up and leave. I don't want to just be weird standing up in the movie theater. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, when it like, is it almost there? So it's just like, I think too, though, it'll be dope when it comes out and uh, like, you know, for video and on uh, streaming services. Speed through. Yeah, you can speed through some of the parts too. But when you look at, so I'll give you this. I agree with you 100%. And that's not how I felt with the Justice League Snyder Cut. And that was longer. Like I watched the Snyder Cut I was like, all right, cool. And watched it again because I was like, this is, it moved. It gave me action. It gave me the adventure. It gave me story. But uh, the only low points were right before um, Martian Manhunter. And then I was like, all right, let me fast forward to seeing him become it. Then let's keep going. Yeah, that was kind of weird. That was kind of weird. Yeah. I I really, I really wish Warner Brothers saw the bigger picture versus the financial gain of the Snyder Cut, but it just wasn't financially smart to have that eight hours of footage and you only can play it twice a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so he was like, we gotta <laughs> chop this, we gotta chop this eight hour project down to two hours. And he was like, how? Well, <laughs> four hours, but four hours. you're absolutely right. They could only play the movie, let's see, right. realistically, no, three right. times. Cause the movies opens at 11 a.m. Okay, count. So 12, 1, 2, 3. Then you do another one at it'll start at 3 30. So it's like 4 no, 35, 36, you gotta get 37, people 30. out. Yeah, you so you still got that's you why I said clean. 30. Yeah. Nice and then now you gotta sanitize too because of COVID. So they not sanitizing shit, but I hear what you're saying. I was like, like, I was like so y'all, I was give, like, y'all giving the theaters way too much. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, hey. They might sponsor one of these, man. If y'all clean these theaters, great. <laughs> I feel I'll be safe, feeling safe, and no and sticky at all when I sit down on these things. So, so they ask- will play at eleven to three, and then three thirty to. So you got at least three three times to play the movie a day, and that's in one theater. So if they just like every big box office theater, they're gonna have at least at least five screens dedicated to this. So you three, got three versus fifteen. <laughs> No, I hear you, but I'm just saying that it would still make a lot of money because they would have a lot of screens. 
So yeah. I, wanted, I, I wanted to ask y'all something because I thought this was uh, interesting as well. So with the Riddler, every- wait, I can't, I can't do my very, very close, close friend Dion like that with success and not do you that with ask. So go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask y'all a question. I gotta ask. What is the hell? Grammar Nazi, I hear. All right. <laughs> um, with every iteration of the Riddler that we got, his motivation was to prove that he was smarter than Batman and Bruce. Yeah, right? Succeeded. Right. In this one, he essentially seen Batman as an equal and kind of used them as like, oh, yeah, we we taking on together. So I thought that that was a different take that I was yeah. I, that I enjoyed. How did you guys feel about that? It was weird. It was like, because you could see uh, Batman be like, hold on, I, I didn't help you. And it's like, yeah, you helped me. No, I don't, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, you helped me. I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, yeah, you, could, you did it all by yourself. And he's like, no, nah, motherfucker, you fixed, you you fucking solved those clues. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't get him into the light. I'm frail as fuck. Right. I'm a Who put him into that street light for me? You did. That was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Thank you. And then I, I love the fake out. Of yeah. Bruce Wayne. He said, no, mother, mother. He said, that's the only one I didn't get. He said, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. He's like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't get him. Oh, that's right. Thought you, thought you knew. <laughs> <laughs> His, everything you just described, that's what uh, uh, Robert Pattinson eyes told just. <laughs> yeah. He said, Whew, that's Whew. crazy. Man. That's- you almost had us. Like, really was like, you're not as smart as I thought you were. No, neither are you. I thought you knew who I was. <laughs> we both done today. He was looking at that camera. He's like, fuck the camera on. I can't go in there and kill him. Okay. Right. Yeah, damn. What the fuck am I going to get out there? I didn't think about that's why they showed that camera. But I, can't I, think go I can't go in and kill him. I can't kill him. Batman turned around looking at the camera like... Cause yo, that's that's another thing I said too. This was the first time we saw Batman kill people. Cause when they were in that stadium and that little uh the thing they was on the scoreboard fell, I was like, all them dudes fell out. I'm like, all them dudes are dead. All of then them. none of them survived because the water well, even, wasn't there yet. Even in the yeah. train station, dog, he beat that nigga to a pulp. Like, Vengeance. bro. <laughs> Vengeance. I was Vengeance. like, dang, dog. The dude and the dude up top too. When he's okay, oh, okay. So that's one thing I did want to bring up too. So I wanted to ask y'all opinion. So do you remember the part? So it was at, towards the end of after he was shot with the uh, shotgun, took full shotgun to the chest, and we're gonna talk about this invincibility ass motherfucker too next. Um, when he was down, he took something that people would would first off think is adrenaline, but I noticed that it was green. So I wanted to post to y'all, could that possibly be the first glimpse of the toxin that Bane gets a hold of to become Bane? Hmm. Was it green? I didn't know. It was that. green. It yeah. was green. It was green. And that's what I was, I'm like, I'm like, okay, they didn't introduce the Joker yet. So it can't be the Joker toxin. It can't be fear toxin because, you know, strange. We don't know about Scarecrow yet. And, uh, yeah, and they yeah. didn't even do, they didn't even set it up like at back at the back cave of like, Make sure you take this. They didn't even show it at all. They just kind of like, uh, we, we got to figure out how to get this nigga back on. It's like, oh, he just had the utility bill. That would have been fine. That would have been fine until the next part. Why the fuck you got a special hole to put this in? Because <laughs> now, yeah, now I need backstory. Yeah, now I need backstory. I need backstory on that. Why yeah, the fuck why do you this? have a hole? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> somebody would have said, how did he get that through him? If he blocking bullets, they was like, they, Yo, like, I get it, but I'm saying we need to know how many times have you microdosed <laughs> patrol in the city for you to have a hole in your costume. And now niggas know he got a hole right there. Shoot that little hole right there. <laughs> 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 so hold him down. Hold him down. Hold him down. <laughs> he got a little opening right there. He got a death star in his knee. Yeah. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Oh, oh, that's that's He's on crutches, man. He moving his legs. Come on, come on, man. Let my arms go. Come on, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. But you know what? If uh, It could be that because if uh, I'm trying to think of, if, if I'm not mistaken, the toxin that Bane takes, if, before Bane start taking it, it it uh, it is being produced. 
So once he starts taking it, it's just the reason why it's so crazy for him to take it is because he takes it in massive doses, and that's what turns Bane into who he is. So it could be mm. that they just again they didn't address anywhere wh- what the toxin was, where it came from, or anything like that. So it's like I'm glad he used something in that fucking utility belt because he yeah. was rarely going into it. He was rarely going that motherfucker. Uh, but I but I like too though because like how, how Dion had mentioned with the freeze thing, I like that it didn't go into it because it does help you want to tie in things a little bit more. Because then the reason why I mentioned that because I believe Ace Chemical Plant makes that. And mm. so now we could get introduced to Ace Chemical Plant, which could also be the leading people who's helped in Victor Freeze solve the seawall crisis. Mm. And then thus this where you tie in the chemicals that he's using along with Nora and then how he becomes Mr. Freeze. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, those could just be the possibility. Like we said, it could be adrenaline because, you know, yeah. but did he really need that after everything we've seen him do, like take a bomb, a bomb to the thing. face? His energy was depleted by the time he took that <laughs> adrenaline. He was his ass whooped and he had Man. just taken a shotgun. Here's the thing. I will say Batman is an incredible, incredible hero, but he's probably the most unsuccessful superhero of all time. These are villains that we're being introduced to that he's going to fight for the next 20 years. And Gotham's crime rate never goes down. Never so it's like... Down. He's wasted 20 some years of his life yeah. for nothing. Right. Yeah. They're not afraid. I mean, they're afraid, but they're going to get out and do the exact same thing. Yeah. And well, then new villains are coming up. That's yep. why Gotham got to be the worst city in comic book city history, because yeah. how many times has it been toppled? It's been it's been ran over by Poison Ivy and her and her gas. It's been ran over by Doctor Strange and the fear gas. It's been ran over by Joker and the Joker game. Ran over by Pink. It was like, damn. Why isn't the population seven? Why are people still <laughs> right? How, how, how cheap is the rent? The That's what I've been wanting to know. Like, how much is it for you to stay here? You see what's going on. Like, I'm sorry. Like, once I see one city get a whole bombing in a seawall, I'm moving. I don't want to no, live here no more. It's not even a bombing. It's like, wait, so you mean the whole city got a cloud over it that makes you see your worst fears? Like, that's <laughs> I ain't even I'm getting to that one. I'm talking about the one for this story. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, though, it's just like, and then people still like, when, when it's done, Batman saves the day, and you don't, your first thought is like, all right, I'm moving the fuck out of here. I'm going to Metropolis. Your first thought is like, all right, we good. I gotta, gotta, good, gotta yeah. go to work tomorrow. Like, Listen, no. <laughs> Metropolis will be my first stop only because. <laughs> At least if I'm about to be in some life-threatening danger, this Superman is going to fly out of nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. to help me. No. Batman said it himself. I can't get to everybody. And that alone, I don't like the odds. I can't get to everybody. I'm looking at like, dark he, shadows and the signal came on and you ain't in this dark shadow? Fuck that. Right. I need you to believe in yourself so I can believe in you. <laughs> right? But imagine you see that shit on social media. Like you be sitting here like Batman just attacked. Man, this nigga was 17 miles away. I knew he went this whole way. Man, I mean, man, I'd go rob somebody again just because of that. Like, you know he what's funny? When you, uh, so cities, if we're thinking about the DC comic book universe, Cities that I would feel safe in, Metropolis and Green Lantern City. I think that's um Queen City. Coast City. Is it no, Queen, Queen City? Uh, Queen is um is Oliver Queen's joint. Coast City is Green Lantern, I believe. Oh, Lantern. You, you Hal you Jordan. Yeah. So Coast City, because you gotta understand all Green Lantern's villains are in space. Yep. Ain't nobody <laughs> on <laughs> Earth. So you safe over there. And Metropolis, because Superman could possibly help you. But other than that, Gotham is a bad choice. Yeah. See, here's why I wouldn't do Metropolis. Here, and here's the thing people don't really be throwing out here, and I'm just gonna say it. Yep. Superman's not graceful. Oh no. So especially for us, like, yeah. first of all, you sitting and swooping in from the from the fucking sky coming down, the inertia alone when you didn't hit Lex Luger has just knocked me into the belly. I'm like, thank you, Superman, for saving me. My legs don't work no more. Uh, but thank you. Yeah. All you, have like, yeah. Belly, all you have to do is avoid downtown. When you watch any Superman series, he's never in the neighborhood. He's always downtown. He never so as long as you don't work downtown or you don't go downtown, if you work on the block, you know what I'm saying? I work at the AT&T store on the corner. Like, you good because that nothing ever happens there. You there should be a lot of accidental deaths. I hear you, Will. There should be a lot of accidental deaths with Superman because there's no way you can punch a villain, save somebody, like, Equally, like trying to like block somebody, but he's like, I didn't crush this dude's head on accident. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like the boys proved that. I was like, yo. Too hard. So, so when you get thrown into a building, no one died. That's what you let me know. <laughs> no, you didn't like, yo, Steve right. did not. Steve didn't make it. He's not making it to the three o'clock meeting because he's inside the wall. When people, when people fall meeting. and inspire, like, like when uh, Spider-Man, uh, the second one. When it makes it Spider-Man too. Yeah. yeah, it should be a lot of that. Like he catches somebody like, ah, I caught you, but everything broke. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm a little skeptical about being there. Like you said. Coast City good because you ain't there. We just get well, to just Central it's kind of, City. Central City. C- Central City. Central City is flash. Yeah. And, and here's and, the thing. And, and, and there's too many, but there's too many speedster villains yeah. in Central City. So it's like there's too many people that I can't see that can fuck nope. me up. I and again, the, and the boys taught us that too at the beginning yes. with the girlfriend. Yeah. Can you just like imagine a, you just standing there and then that one happened to you? Like, yo, I'm like, no, I'm cool. And then also as well. Flash, not graceful at all. <laughs> Especially because he'll grab you and run you at his top speed mm-hmm. out of the way. They're like, no, my body can't take this. Your mm-hmm. body can. I mm-hmm. can't take these high speeds, bro. He's a good boy. They're, like, they're like, thank you, citizen. Oh, I passed out because I can't breathe because you were oh. going at Mach 7 and However, ain't no air. When we look at the when we look at Batman, this version of Batman, we look at the Joker movie before it. Uh, of course, all these directors change their mind when money gets involved because the director of the Joker was like, yeah, this is only going to be a one-off. Oscar buzz, a billion dollars. Yeah, we're going to make a sequel. It's like, exactly. <laughs> so this Batman making the money, people talking about it. Well, we could incorporate him in the universe in probably like a year and a half. So I feel like had they not given, and I love Snyder, had they not given Snyder such a long leash, we could have gotten all of these heroes their year two versions and then they could have went into the next 10 to 12 years perfectly however the wonder woman we have she can't be around for the next 12 14 years but Momoa, that, but, yeah but that's why we but that's why I, how i told you like they should have made her the anchor and made her the iron man of their dc stuff because again mm-hmm. she goes throughout history let yeah. her be the one that let them know like hey Y'all all kind of starting on this. Let me know, like, let me let y'all know what's really been going on with this stuff and yeah. what really is here. And so it's just like, yo, that would have let us know about um, Dark Side. That would have let us know about all the other things that we didn't really know about and letting them kind of come together too. Because I would have loved, like you said, I would love to see like a year or two uh, Aquaman. Yeah. Just, just brash, don't care. Well, he kind of is that right now, like old. the Momoa. He yeah. exactly. He's old, okay. but he's still a year two Aquaman. They showed yeah. us that with Justice League and well, with Batman versus Superman, Justice League and the Aquaman movie. The Aquaman movie damn near made him his year two. We haven't even gotten a Flash yet. All of that shit got pushed back to next year, which yeah. is annoying as fuck. Man. And then you look at um, who else? Do we, we still don't even have a Green Lantern. We got a Martian Manhunter, but do we? Because they just said everything from Snyderverse is gone, except yeah. for the heroes we've already established. Well, we still don't know who a Batman is, because also, too, they're talking about from Flashpoint, Michael Keaton's Batman is the Batman of that universe. Well, we, right. and, and, we also, and we also don't know Superman I, we, I, with, the, oh, shit, with yeah. the Henry Cavill situation, because mm-hmm. even at the end of Peacemaker... The reason why Superman is the only in the shadows, you can't see in the shadows, is and Wonder Woman, and Wonder, oh, Wonder Woman, because yeah, because Gal Gadot says she wasn't sure if she's gonna come back yeah. for a third movie. What? Oh, yeah. She yeah. said she's not sure. Oh, uh, because I think the person who directed the first two, they haven't locked her in, and she the said woman. she, yeah, the woman director, the, the lady that directed the first two, she only wants to work with her in yeah. making these. Well, let me tell you so. Based off how number two was, she might want to seek some other <laughs> outside. <him. laughs> <Wow. Okay. laughs> so we got to talk about probably one of the most epic Batman scenes that we've seen. Uh-huh. But that was that Batmobile car chase. That's funny. Oh. The fact that it was. I see, that car, am I the only one? That car was on year two as well. That must. <laughs> yeah, oh, it definitely was. That was a challenger. <laughs> Had to it was. Up and but, said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't think that went how that y'all thought that was gonna go. No. Like I saw what y'all were trying to do as yeah. like hinting for like, yo, Penguin, go get in your car. I want to do a car chase. But then yeah. too, it's like, why would I go do a car chase with you? But that scene was you can't that you can't tell me that scene wasn't dope as fuck. That scene was fire. Yeah. Um, Until the like, ramp bro, came down perfectly. That like, was yeah. the perfect scene. You no, no, no! How you kept dodging cars perfectly in the rain? 
in the you rain. Said, I'm like, so you ain't hit nobody? Oh, nobody. Right. I was like, he whipping that motherfucker, but I was just like, the fear of that chase. Like, you really felt like, yo, this Batman don't give a fuck about nobody. He gonna run Penguin down and run him the fuck over. Like, that's how I felt. And I thought that that whole scene was dope. Even like, like when when Penguin, when, when Cobblepot started celebrating, like, he legit mm. thought like, yeah, I got your ass. And when he came through, you can see it in his face like, bruh, I ain't got nothing else. I done did all my tricks. Mm. Like, I really love that we scene failed to, What we failed to mention is Again, 23 people minimum died on that car chase. And Batman <laughs> is still <free>. at large. <laughs> at large. Well, that white privilege was in full effect on that highway. Cause bro, I can't I, and I can't tell how many million, how many billions was probably lost? Bro, not all them 18 wheels that crash on that gas. Not even people, though. He was fucking up businesses. That dog, them semis had businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wait for gas in Missouri. Like, what the what the gas at? They're like, no wonder gas is six dollars a gallon now. That man boiled the shit up over there. That's why. <laughs> why y'all high five this nigga, man? We, we we broke. He didn't burn down no grocery store. I heard the description for Batman, and it was the greatest I'd ever read. They said Batman is the true villain because he's this rich white man that's trying to keep all of these people away from getting money. <laughs> Bro, let, let me find out he owns the insurance companies as well. Like, hey, you oh. know, they don't cover Batman. Like, like we saw, he owns Wayne. He owns all the technology. He owns mm. the asylum. And he owns the insurance company. Like, that, he triple dipping. That's what I would like to see, <laughs> though. I would like to see exactly what does Wayne own. Like, what does Wayne <laughs> Corp actually do? Like, they never tell us that. Like, what do you actually do? And what do you actually own? Um, as far as, like, characters go, Batman or Robert Pattinson is growing on us and stuff. Bruce, his Bruce Wayne could definitely catch a little bit, but of course, though, you know, we definitely want to know what y'all think. So we want to let y'all know for thank you for joining us here on the Strand of a Comic Book Show. Of course, Young Deuce CT and Dion Lack, thank y'all for joining me today. Uh, of course, another another extended episode, and that's why I love these because we go deep into it, we dive in, we go even to other places and stuff, and folks love that. And so, like, just like us, we can't wait to see what's next for Batman. But uh, before we go, I always like. Uh, my guests to shout out what they got coming up. So I want to start with, of uh, course, Young Dude, CT, the Dion, and then we are going to go ahead and call it another great episode. Young Deuce, you have the floor. All right, man. Well, thank you again for having me, man. I told, I, I told you I, I truly appreciate being a part of these panels, man, and just being able to deep dive into the stuff that we love. If you guys want to follow me, man, it's Young underscore Deuces everywhere or at Geek Set Podcast. Um, I don't, by the time this air, my interview, I put, I'm putting out an interview with uh, Jordan L. Jones, AKA the, he's the new jazz in, the, in Bel Air. Uh, hey. You know what I'm saying? So like that should be out. Also, you know, if you haven't checked it, man, I interviewed Kadeem Hardison, amazing episode. That's out, man. That's been really dope. Um, that episode, this season has been, I, I've been talking to a lot of legends, man. I've got a chance to talk to Kel Mitchell. I talked to Cesar Yarrow. I talked to Kadeem Hardison. Um, and all of those episodes are out. So, you know, go to youtube.com backslash Geek Set Podcast. Watch those interviews, man, because they're really dope. And if you haven't, one of the biggest things that I'm trying to make sure that I amplify for Black History Month, I know it's past, but I did reach out to over 30 blurbs and I asked them three questions. I asked them, what does Black History Month mean to you? Uh, what makes you proud to be Black? And Black, uh, black History Month plus blurred culture, what's the first thing that comes to mind? And the conversations that I had with people were so dope. And it was what was really dope about it was, it was this is 30 blurs across the world. And though we all have different walks of life, there was so much similarities to how we were taught Black History Month and the things that we connect with and how our upbringing was with it. And I'm really, really big on making sure that I can amplify other people's voices. And because there were 30 plus blurs on there from all walks of life saying some dope stuff, I hope that people watch these videos, see something that they like from some of these creators and go follow them. So when you go to the video within the description, it has all, it has everybody involved in the video, all their at information so you can follow them. But I really wanna get more eyes on that video because it was such an important piece. And I thought it was really dope to do something for the culture by the culture. We see so many white companies who pander <laughs> during Black History Month reach out to creators and be like, okay, let's do something for Black History Month. And then they don't work with them ever again. I'm changing that. I said, you know what, let me take that. I'm going to do that with Geek Set. I'm going to put together 
this BuzzFeed style video about Black History Month, but it's for us. But then throughout the years, I'm also going to be collaborating with all the people that you see in the video. So I just want to make sure we amplify that and show that show that team, you know, mentality and everything like that. So yeah, go to youtube.com backslash geek set podcast. That's where all of the information is with all the videos. And thank you guys again. Man, I wish you <clears throat> nothing but success continuously. I remember you posted in the group chat and I was like, hey man, not in the group chat, man. Send us this yeah. shit separate. And you never sent it separately because I was like, oh man, I wish I would have known. <laughs> oh, I, like, I see, I missed that part. I, when I yeah. saw that, I was like, dang it, I want, I, 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 like, you know, in my head, I'm like, yeah. in, in my Dang head, not, remember, that's why I was like, yo, send it to him, because you sent it to yeah. me, and I was like, yo, send it to him. In my, <laughs> in, my head, I'm, in my head, I'm I'm the newbie. I feel like in my head, I'm still I'm still in training, where y'all trying to figure out, like, is dudes cool or not? So I was like, when you said that, I was like, damn, I'm about to get kicked out the group chat. No. Like, <laughs> like, Here's the funny <laughs> thing. You would never get kicked out the group chat. It's just like, because I'll tell you, because I got another group chat uh, on my IG, it's the team CT all day, right? Where I got yeah. like a lot of the members of the squad in there. And I tell them all, I'm like, yo, this is for us to send each other memes yeah. and say some wild, funny shit. But no, like one, like one dude was like, yo, y'all join my discord. I said, Hey man, this ain't, this ain't for that. If anything, it's going to be CT news in this bitch. You understand? <laughs> but nobody promoting. And then another cat tried to promote. And I was like, look, and I had to end the group. And I had to form another group because, you know, when there's so many people in that group, you know, um, just to say it lightly, you know, a lot of people might not have a lot of followers, right? So they see a lot of numbers in the group and they're like, I'm about to just promote to these people. And it's like, that's not what this is for. So yeah. with this group that we're all in, I was like, I, I'm so uh, shell shocked from that. I'm like, no, 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 please, please yeah. no advertisements here. Just send it to me separately, which anything that you ever want me to rock on send it to me separately i'm mm -hmm. in but i thought like every time i see y'all names pop up in the group chat i think i'm about to get some brand new superhero news so yeah. i'm like oh shit and i open it up and it's like hey guys i'm like god damn it <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, it's, it's just me in my head like i'm, in, yeah. I'm like oh shit no he's about, about to kick me out no 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 this is wild like no nah. <laughs> this is literally this is wild, <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah ct you up uh, hey man, um, CT is dope on everything. Just type that in. Dion Lack, fresh off the birthday. The hey, big four oh. Yes, Happy sir. birthday. Hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> the timing. <bro. laughs> and it's <laughs> off. I, I apologize. I apologize. You're the goat, bro. Uh, video went off. Uh, first things first. Goat. Um, Thank y'all, man, uh, for including your boy. We should call ourselves the, uh, you know, the laxative, black laxatives, you know, because we don't hold back shit. I like to call um, back. <laughs> um, I of, of right now um, have two podcasts, uh, one with Chasmin Rogers called Lacaroni and Chaz, and I have another one called Random Ass Conversations with Twills. Um, and I got two studios in Los Angeles. You're more than welcome to come by and shoot interviews, movies, TV shows, uh, photo shoots, anything you want. I have a piano here, you know, portray a music video. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, you can also go to him if you are trying to become a potential superhero on how to undress quickly and put on your costume. Because oh, like, I sure. don't even know. Oh man, <laughs> I tell you, if he pop back up in two seconds and he fully dressed, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what's going on. No, I don't. But of course, y'all already know. Follow me everything at Will Farrow. That's P H R A O H. Uh, you can check out on my YouTube channel. I have Farrow's Vault. Of course, here straight out of a comic book and as well as arcade tokens, all dev cannabis and all dev gaming. You can check me out there as well. But we want to thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Straight Out of Comic Book. Make sure you like and subscribe and then let us know how did you feel about the Batman movie? OK, try to keep the spoilers to a minimum and stuff, but feel free to talk about it in the comments below and we will catch you next time. OK, then. Boom. Boom. To the loop. <laughs>